In this video we're going to look at five more stitches for lettering. Okay, I think you're going to have to go, buddy. Good boy. So we have an express version of this video where I just recap the stitches. So if you want a refresh of those, you can check that out up here. This is the second video for stitches. So if you haven't seen the first ones, we'll put a link to those at the end of this video. Okay, let's get going. So I'm going to use a stranded cotton for these letters. Um, I'm using three strands for this first one. And this might seem like an unlikely stitch for lettering, but it's really decorative one. And you can use this stitch individually, but it does look nice if you put them together. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to do it on this number five here. And I'm actually going to start down in this corner here because this is um, quite a narrow angle here. And I want to make sure I get my stitch in the right place. I'm going to start there. I'm going to work around the bottom and then come back to that point and work up to the top glasses on. So an eyelet consists of lots of straight stitches that all meet in the middle. So I'm going to come up away from the edge and I'm going to go down right on that point there and that will become the middle of my stitch. I'm just going to work around in a circle. It doesn't matter which way around you go, whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise if you're my friends watching in the States. And I'm just coming up away from the design line and down into the middle. And that middle is the same point each time. I'm not worrying about making them the same length. I quite like them different lengths. And just by putting that first one in, I can make sure that that's in a nice position. Now, what I do want to do is cover up my design line. So I'm going to sort of do a row of these stitches. So I'm just going to make sure I put a stitch over the design line. So a nice simple stitch, not difficult at all. So there's the first one. So the second one I need to attach to the first one. So I'm going to come up at the end of that one and I'm going to come along my line now. And that point there will be the middle of the second one. So down into the middle each time, making these different lengths, but always work round in a circle. If you jump around, you lose the center of the eyelet. So it's good just to work round in a circle. So down into that hole in the middle, put one on the line just to make sure you cover your design line up. Make this one a bit longer. So you can sort of make them to fit as well. So as I get nearer to this one, I might just put a little short one in right at the end. Okay, so eyelet number two. So to start the third one, I'm just going to start at the end of that second one. on the line that will make the middle of the third one. I'm just going to work my way all around this shape now until I get to the end. So I've got my last one here before I get to the end. So just think about where the middle might come. So if I put it right on the end, my eyelets are going to come off the end. So I'm just going to make the middle about there. And then I've got room to fit it in at the end. Now I'm using a variegated thread and you can see those beautiful colours coming out. So it almost saves me changing colour and making those choices. It's just doing it for me. So really nice opportunity to use a variegated thread. So there's the end my five with that stitch there so you can just ensure that it fits nicely onto the end so as you come up to that point just think about how long you want your stitches to be and how you're going to finish the end of your letter 
Right, got to the end there, so I'm going to come back to this point here and I'm going to work my way up and I'm going to come out to the end here. So putting the last one in now and I've made that halfway point there, the middle, so that by finishing stitch here we'll come to the end of the five. So just something to think about as you're working this one is how do you fit all your a whole eyelet in if you like. So I'm going to come up on that end there, that will be one of the spokes of the eyelet and that gets to the end of my five so that fits nicely. You don't really want to end up with half an eyelet um, so just think about that on your way around. Just picking a bit of thread up from underneath so just cut that off. So this is my last stitch my eyelets and I'm just going to run my thread underneath the stitches on the back to finish it off. So that's a nice row of eyelet stitches. So this is another stitch I'm going to use that's made up of individual stitches put together. So these are fly stitches. So you can work these either way. They make a little V shape. Um, it's supposed to look like a fly. Um, so you can choose which way you have your V shape. I'm going to do mine pointing up and then down and then up and then down but you can do them the other way around if you like so I'm going to start at the bottom of my letter here I'm using three strands again for this one and I'm going to make a long stitch along the design line like so and that's just to start it off so now I'm going to do the actual fly stitch so up to the left leaving a gap down to the right leaving the same gap I'm going to make a loop loop goes in the direction that I'm stitching, needle comes up at the end of that first stitch and inside the loop. I'm going to pull it through and then just tension it by pulling in the direction that you're stitching in and you can see it makes that V shape and this stitch comes out from the V shape. If I pull it that way I lose my tension and I lose my shape so it's important that you pull it in the direction that you're going and then to finish the stitch off taking another long stitch, try and make it the same length as the first one along the line and just pull it through straight. So that's one fly stitch. So all I'm going to do is repeat that. So up on the left, down on the right, make my loop lies in the direction that I'm stitching in. Needle comes up at the end of that previous stitch and inside the loop and just tension it in the direction you're stitching in. So just try and keep these nice and even length. You can change the length if you want to, but um, for this I'm going to keep mine nice and even. I'm just going to work up towards the tip of the M here. Now I do have to think a little bit ahead about what's going to happen when I come down here. So I may actually just shorten the, the fly stitches, but we'll see when we get there. So there's my loop up at the end of the previous stitch, up inside the loop, pull it tight. And you can see my sort of little V's are all pointing upwards. You can do them the other way around if you like. If you do them the other way around you'll need to start at the top and work downwards. Right, we're going to get one more in here and because it's meeting this line coming down here I'm just going to come in a tiny bit with that otherwise I'm carrying on. Now this is going to be the end of my stitch, I'm going to take it right down on that point. If anything just a little bit over just to make sure I cover that and that's one row done. So now I'm going to come down here, so I'm going to start the same way, I'm going to put my stitch in first just to get going and then I'm going to do my little fly stitches. So they're going to point now they're going to follow the shape, so they're going to point down to this point here now. So I'm just going to sneak my stitch in there because it's quite close. Don't worry about if it doesn't exactly fit, that's fine. Coming up at the end of the previous stitch, making my V shape, putting my stem on. Now I get into a bit of open air, so I'm just going to come up on one side down on the other. It doesn't really matter which side you come up and down on because you don't finish it till you've done both. So up at the end, make my long stitch to finish that fly stitch off. So 
just working my way down to the point now, same as before. My fly stitches are coming towards me now because I've changed direction, but the process is exactly the same. I'm going to make that stitch the last stitch. Now I'm coming up this side, so we make a long stitch to get started. Loop in the direction I'm going, so now I'm going up again. Just going to carry on all the way to the end in the same way. So coming to the bottom now, I think we'll just get one more stitch in, I think, there. We'll make the fixing of that stitch the last one, so right at the end there. And again, I'll just weave my thread through under the back to make a nice row of five stitches. So this stitch is quite a decorative stitch that you can actually put around lots of different stitches. So I'm going to just work a kind of a running stitch first and that's going to indicate where my letter is and then I'm going to work the picots around the letter to decorate the letter. So you could put any stitch you like in here but I'm just going to put a running stitch in just to show you the technique. So I'm using three strands again. I'm going to come up at the end and I'm going to do quite large stitches because that will be the length of my pico and then what I'm going to do is just leave a little space between and you'll see why that is later on. So try and make these the same length so that your picots all come out the same. I'm just stepping my way around this letter so leave that space that gives us room to stitch later. I'm just going to do this all the way around the whole shape. Okay, I'm going to work the first pico around this stitch here. I'm going to do them to the outside. So I'm going to come up at the end of that stitch down at the other end. Now what's quite useful to have here is a pin and I'm going to put that pin in about that far away and my thread is going to go around the pin and into the other end of that stitch. And then I'm going to do two of these just to give myself something solid to work around. So back up at the end, back around the pin, back down at the other end. Now come up just near to where you went down, just on the outside. Bring the needle out and then you can take the pin out. And that leaves me two little bars and I'm going to stitch around those bars. So I'm going to do a buttonhole stitch around those. So I'm going to make a loop. Now the loop will come to the outside of my letter O. Like so. So make that loop nice and big and I'm going to take my needle through the loops. Don't catch it in the, the thread or the fabric. It's going to come inside that loop. Don't go underneath. Don't go underneath it, make sure you come up inside the loop. So you see when I pull that to the outside of the circle how that just forms a loop around those two threads. That's my first buttonhole, so I'm just going to repeat that. So make my loop again underneath these two stitches here, up inside the loop, tension to the outside. This is going to form a little edge around here. You'll see the pico start to form. Do them nice and close to each other. Now, I didn't come up inside the loop then, but it's okay. I can just bring my needle inside it now. So there's my loop inside. Pull that quite tightly. Now this thread will twist up, so I suggest you manage it until you finish one pico and then you can untwist it. 
when you take your thread through to the back. So there's my loop underneath, up inside the loop. Get as many in as you can, so I think one more in there. And there is the little pico. So you can make that as big as you like. If I put my pin further out, it would be bigger, so you can choose. And then just to finish that off, I'm going to take the needle back down at the end of that stitch there just to secure the end and that's one pico done so let's do another one so it doesn't matter really whether you start this end or the other end so up and down just let my needle hang underneath to untwist it so I'm going to put my pin in at the same distance as I did before I want these to be the same So back up where I started, which was here. So this is why we need the gap between the stitches because there's quite a lot of stitching in and out going on. So you just want to leave yourself room for that. So we'll go around twice. I'll come back up where I want to start, just next to that first bit, like so. Take the pin out. Now I can start my buttonhole again. So make that loop going underneath these two stitches here, up inside the loop, and off we go again. With our buttonhole. It does get quite quick as you do more. So it seems a bit fiddly at first, but when you get into the swing of it it goes in quite quickly so there we are we're at the end take the needle down at the end of that stitch you can just fiddle with these to make them lie nice and flat you can see those colors coming out as well because I'm using the variegated again so I'm just going to go all the way around the O shape and I'll see you again at the other end okay so I've been round my letter and I've got two more to do so I'll just go over that again um, now just a little tip when you're doing this, it's a good idea to turn the frame around as you go and do them all the same way around because now I'm upside down. But I'm going to keep it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So just put my pin in to mark how big my pico is going to be. Second stitch around the pin. Just come up just to the side of that, ready to start my button off stitch and once you've brought the thread up then take the pin out and make a loop so it's under these two stitches up inside the loop form your buttonhole around those stitches so don't forget to make the loop first so that needle comes up inside the loop and then you don't have to think about what happens if you haven't made the loop so do that bit first to make it a little bit easier. Also much easier if you've got two hands free, so if you've got a frame to put your embroidery in. I'm using a versatile table clamp to hold mine, so it allows me to use both hands. Just be careful not to pick up any other stitches. One more through there. down at the end and then the last one is just going to sit inside so I just have to make sure that I don't get in the way of these ones to the outside so just put my pin in again makes it much easier Just coming up inside that shape there so just very carefully choose where I want to bring the needle out threads come through take the pin out and then you can just grit your buttonhole around those bars for the last time now this stitch does take a little bit longer it's a little bit more involved than the other ones that we've done but it is such a beautiful stitch and you can do it around any anything you like really, round an edging you like, so you, I've done it around the running stitch but you can do it around any stitch you like. So one more, I think we'll call that done, there we go, back through to the back there just to finish that off and again I'll weave it through under the back 
Um, and now these are three dimensional, so they will stick up. So just flatten them down a little bit and you can pull them into shape. Very, very beautiful stitch. So well worth spending the time to learn picots. I'm going to use six strands for coral stitch. This one looks a little bit better if you've got a thicker thread, makes it a bit more substantial. And I'm going to start at the bottom of the letter and work my way up. So this one consists of little knots around some straight stitches. So starting at the bottom. Now the trick with this one is to put the thread in the direction that you're stitching in. And I'm going to take my needle down, so lay, lay your thread in the direction you're going and the needle goes down to the right, that will be where your knot sits, so make sure you've got your needle where you want the knot to be. Now I've made a loop that goes around to the left, that loop is important because the needle is now going to come up on the left of that thread and inside the loop. So that's important. Pull the thread through from the back, pull the thread through from the front and that will give you a nice neat knot. So there's my first knot. So lie the thread in the direction you're going. Needle goes down on the right hand side. Form that loop. So don't pull the thread through very far. Make sure you've got that nice big loop. Comes up on the left which is inside the loop. Pull it through to the back to form the knot. Pull the needle up to the top. So if you've got a letter that's got more curves in it, you might want to put your knots closer together so you can get around the curves more easily and on a straight bit you can step it out a bit. You can put your knots right next to each other if you want, that will give you a different effect again. So quite a versatile one this one. You can stitch it how you like. I'm just putting them evenly about this distance apart so you can clearly see the knots and what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go all the way to the top and then I will work my way around the rest of the letter. Now we will be changing direction, but you just do exactly the same as you've done. So you can either turn your frame around so you're always going in the same direction, but otherwise just lay the thread in the direction that you're going. And work the same way, so I'll just show you that one. So I'm now going in this direction, so my loop will be to the outside of the R as it was to the outside of this part here. Needle goes down on this side. There is my loop. So it comes up inside the loop on the other side of the thread. Pull it through to the back. There's my knot. So don't change the method just because you've changed direction. If you want to change a frame though to make it easier, that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to work my way all the way around the R. And I'll see you at the end. So, so last stitch for this one. Back up inside the loop. There's my final knot and then just to finish take the needle down at the end. So nice quick stitch this one with a little bit of versatility. You can choose where you put your knots. So that's a coral stitch. I'm going to do chain stitch variation now. So this is going to be a twisted chain. So it's like a normal chain stitch with an extra move in it. So when you're doing letters, think about what order you do your letters in. So I'm going to do this little bar first and then I can come along the bottom, up the side and along the top. Just make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to put my little starting stitches down here that will get covered up later. I'm going to jump up to here to start. So we're going to come up just above the line and then take the needle down just below it. So there's a bit of a gap. And there is my loop, that's for my chain. And if we're doing normal chain stitch, we'd leave it like that. But we're doing twisted chain. So all I'm going to do is turn the loop over and you can see that cross that it does. That's the twist in it. So then I'm going to come up inside that loop just above the line again. Pull that tight. And there you can see a chain stitch that's been twisted. So then we're going to go down just below the line. So normal chain stitch you'd go back down inside the chain. This one you come down the outside. So just below. There's the loop of my chain. I'm going to turn it over. So it crosses. 
just above the line to make my second one. Now don't pull them too tight or you'll lose the chain effect. I think we'll get one, just one more in there. Turn the loop over, just get a little short one in inside and then to finish that off I'm just going to take my needle down the other side of it and that will finish that chain off. So I'm going to jump down here now. I'll do a little step the stitch down and come across so I can go along the bottom and up the side. So I'm going to start just above, take the needle down just below, there is my loop, turn it over to twist it, just open it out, come up inside the loop just above that line there, pull it in the direction you're going, there's my first twisted chain, so back down below the line on the outside of that, there's my chain, turn it over to twist it, just above the line inside the loop, so this one is about tension, if you pull them too tight you lose your chains, if you don't pull them tight enough Get baggy chains, so this one just takes a bit of practice to get the tension right. And I'm just going to do a little short one here because we're at the line. I'm going to finish that, I'm going to take that through to the back to finish that off, and I'm going to come up above it to start my vertical line now. We're going upwards now, so I'm coming up just on the right and down on the left -hand side. So twist my chain, coming up on the right, take the needle down on the left, twist my chain, come up inside the chain, down on the left the chain. We're just going to go straight past the end of this one. Twist the chain on the right inside the loop, pull the chain down on the left. So I'm just going to go all the way to the end in exactly the same way. So just on those last few now, One more, I think, just to get to the end. On the left, through the loop. Pull that one carefully and then over the end just to finish that off. I'm going to weave that thread through on the back. So that's a twisted chain stitch. So I've done my five stitches for lettering, but just to finish the design off, I'm going to work this line underneath. So if you want to hang around um, with me and watch me do that, that would be great. Don't forget to subscribe um, to the channel. Click the button um, to bookmark our channel and click the little bell if you want a notification of when we upload something new. And if you've liked this video, do give us a thumbs up as well. OK, so let's finish off our design. So to finish this off and just make it look a bit more of a design, I'm going to work this line down here. So I'm going to do a woven back stitch down here. We've got a video on that up in this corner here if you want to see that. And then I might just embellish it with a few more eyelets and maybe even a few spangles will probably creep their way in there. So let's do some stitching.
So there we have it, finished design. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, do leave any comments or ask any questions if you want to um, and give us a thumbs up if you've liked it um, and check out all our other videos. We've got over 200 embroidery videos, so lots to see there. So check it out. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.